um, in, in Matthew chapter 11, or verse 20 down, it says, then he began to rebuke the cities in which most of his mighty works had been done, but they did not repent. It said, Woe to you, Chorazin, sorry, Woe to you, Bethsaida, for the mighty works which are done in you have been done in Stan and Sidon, that I repented long ago in Sacred and Ashes. Then say unto you, It will be more terrible for Tyre and Sidon in Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. You Capernaum were exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. For the mighty works which are done in you have been done in Sodom. They have, they have remained until this day. Let's say unto you, shall be more tolerant for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. Christians, as Christians, sometimes we get caught up with what exactly affects the heart of God. We think of sins like murder, adultery, adultery, other things that we think about. I think that, 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 that troubles God as much as lying. Actually, what troubles God is when we disobey him. It doesn't matter what it is. It is major, as we might think, or minor. That's what affects our relationship with God. In fact, think about it. With Adam and Eve, it was not about eating the fruit, you know. The fruit was not, was not, was not non issue. It was because God said, don't eat it. And ate it. God said to them, um, don't, don't cross the river. And they kill the elephant. Not be an issue. But if they cross the river, it would be a big issue. Similarly here, Jesus is saying that, listen, the sin of Sodom, which you know was homosexuality, one of the issues, is a minor sin compared to the fact that the, the other cities never repented to the preaching of the gospel. Therefore, not repenting to the preaching of the gospel is a bigger sin to, in God's eyes than homosexuality. What, what, what say you to us? Homosexuality is a bigger sin. But God said, listen, because you didn't repent, you're going to be Georgia. That's not my grandma. That's more tolerable for them than for you. Why? Because you didn't repent, even though they, they committed homosexuality. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes what we say is big sins. In God's eyes, is the fact that we haven't obeyed him makes a big sin. Not the fact of what we did in the eyes of men. What, what am I saying? That we need to change our perspective. If, if you don't share the gospel with people, that's a bigger issue with God than homosexuality. Today, at, at family, they share about self-righteousness. And there are some people that are self-righteous say, oh, listen, I didn't do this, I didn't do that, they knew that. They knew that, but yes, did you have devotion? Did you spend time with God? That might be, be, be a bigger issue than the man who robbed somebody. Because this question is a lot of God with the only heart. And so we need to change our perspective on quite a number of things. See the way God sees it, a bigger issue to God than the issues of what men call immoral, immorality. This is I mean God is worse than acts of immorality. Um, Abraham married his half sister. Jacob married two sisters and their maids. And according to what scripture says, they shouldn't have done that. But let me just God never made a big issue about that. As he has made, made an issue about unbelieving. Why am I saying that? We need to start to care for what God cares for. Amen? Amen. I'm going to share my screen with a message for today. Amen. We're, we're going to be looking at um, the close of the current age. And of each eternal future. You know, the only thing I talk about needs versus purpose. This topic, this section of that topic is, is quite large. And I and I've scaled it down. I still can't finish it in, in two weeks. I'm gonna try to give, give as much answers as I can. I'm gonna stop by a certain time for people to ask questions because. This, I have to go slow in, in this. People, so some of the things that we're sharing have not been shared in my churches. You may never, never have even heard them. 
And people are afraid to read the book of Revelations. They don't, they don't want to touch it because they're, they're so scared. They don't understand God is doing something and he wants us to know what he's doing. Jesus calls us his friends for he tells his friend what he's doing. How many Christians are there? Um, don't realize what God is doing. Get caught up with issues. L like, for example, in Jamaica, we have two main parties, PNP and JLP. And there are Christians on both sides who fight against each other. In, in the States, we have Republican Democrats. And I've heard Christians curse. In fact, you know what to find interesting? I, my perspective is this. If, if a Democrat or a Republican says something to me, if they are Christian, in my mind, they are Christian first. So I don't doubt them. I, I will not never take sides against a Christian um, with, with, with a non-Christian. So a non-Christian tell me something against a Christian, I'll never take it aside. I try to find out if it's true and try to fix it. There are Christians over here who, if they support Republican and they are about a, a Democrat, Christian speaking something, they start a right of us, line to line into line. No, no, no. Well, that, that, listen, that they are first a Christian. They have to respond to God. And what does that mean is that we get this, this mindset, we get caught up with the world. As I'm going to say with, with the, the, the Babylon the Great, we get caught up with the world. And don't realize how, how messed up the world is. And it messes up, messes up as well. Amen. So we're going to start. Needs versus purpose. In exploring the close of the current age and our eternal future, we have to be aware of, of a few scriptural principles. There are some principles we need, we need to be aware of. Many persons when to talk about the end time, they start to panic because they don't understand some principles. The first one is God is in charge of what happens at the, at the close of the age. God is in charge. Not Satan. God is in charge. So I've been afraid of Satan. God is in charge. Acts 1, 67 says, Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or season which the Father has put in his own authority. Right. The Father has put those times in his own authority. Nothing happens before he's ready for it to happen. Not Satan, but God. God is in charge. Mark 13, 32. But of, of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. The Father knows some stuff that nobody else knows. He's in total in charge. Revelation 7, 3. Saying, do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till he have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. No, we're going to look at this in Revelation 7. But he's about to, to damage the earth. He said, listen, don't, don't, do not damage it until the servants of God are sealed in their fire. That's it. Nothing happened before already. Don't hurt. Don't, don't damage anything until my people are sealed. Put a mark on them. Protect them. So we don't need to worry about the end time. But partner with God, as we're going to say a little later. Partner with God to bring it to pass. There are some Christians who are caught up of uh, on, 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 on this life. They have no concept and no desire for the next life. They have no clue what is, is, is going to happen next. They only live to be blessed and to look, live better in this life. Nothing else. But if you understand God, God is against Satan's domination. And he has to bring it to the end. The second second principle is God's view of time differs drastically from ours. So the first one is God is in charge of what happens. Second one, God's view of time differs drastically from ours. Two passages. Psalm 90 verse 4. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it passes by, or like a watch in the night. It, it is saying that God's, in, in God's sight, 1,000 human years are equivalent to 24 hours before God. They even compare that, that thousand year to our watch in the night. Our three years are four hours each. Our watch is, is four hours. God is comparing um, 1,000 years 
the inner sight or for us. What, what do you think is the cat holding in your arm in God's eyes is, is, is for us? I watch it at night. This passage is, re is referenced in Second Peter 3 8. But do not let this one bad escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. The point is, God is able to examine thoroughly the most intricate detail of a thousand years in 24 hours or in 24 hours. All the specific details of every person, place, or thing that happened from Jesus' birth to now in 2023, God, God can examine it in intricate detail in 68 hours. Can you imagine? 2,000 years? You see every, every, every detail of it in, in, in 8 hours. People who have died centuries ago to see what hours ago to them when they're, when they're in heaven. They died centuries ago, but they seem like hours on hours. The third one, there are statements and principles and events in the scriptures that have more than one, one, more than one application. There are statements and principles and events in scriptures that have more than one application. Examples. Um, Psalm 419. Uh, even my own 19, sorry. Even my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. While John three John 13, 8, I do 18 not, says, I do not speak concerning all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. He who eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. Well, this is an, this is an example of, of a, 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 an event that has more than one applications. The, the first one in Psalm 41, 19, King David, as a good friend, Ahi Ithopem, is, 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 is um, Bathsheba's grandfather. First, first Chronicle 27, 30, is described as a respect, the respect that the king had for him. It says, Ahithophel was a king's counselor. He wasn't just one of David's counselors, but he was the king's counselor. Big position. He was very close to David. David never did anything without getting advice from him. We read about him betraying David and Absalom also him from being king. Sorry. And second, Samuel 15 to 18. Second part is, con is concerning Judas, one of Jesus' disciples. We trade him. Same statement, two different applications. Right? Same, same statement. My familiar friend, as, 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 as Ed Bredden, me at lift up, is he again me? Same statement, two different applications. The first one was David and his friend, Ayo, Ethopel. Second one, Jesus and Judas. But do you relate to both? Second point. We see the same principle in Deuteronomy 25, 4 and 1 Corinthians 9, 9, 9. Deuteronomy 25, 4 says, You shall not muzzle an ox while it threads, um, it threads on, out the green. This instruction is repeated in 1 Corinthians 9, 9, 9. For it is written in the law of Moses, You shall not muzzle an ox while it threads on, out the green. Is it... Is it oxen God is concerned about? The first passage talks about how to treat the animals who are used to crush grain. Second talks about compensating full time ministers. Same statement, two different applications. Third one, Jezebel. Read about Jezebel, the wife of King Help from 1 Kings 15 to 2 Kings 9. She's a very wicked queen and had a reputation for murder and adultery. She helped to establish Baal worship. Nation of Israel. Their worship include obscene sexual rights and sacrifice of children using fire. We also read about that same spirit, the spirit of Jezebel operating in a woman in the church in Thyatira. Revelation 2 20 to 23. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrifice to idols 
and I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into us into a sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and the heart and hearts, and I will give to each one of you according to your works. These are just a few examples of statements and actions which also have prophetic meanings and show up at other times. The other thing that God says early in, in, in the scriptures, that, that application somewhere else again. The prophetic application, prophetic meaning. The third, the, 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 I think the third point, fourth point, please remain teachable. Remain teachable. I'm not saying to accept everything I said, but listen, remain teachable. That, that is, take what I say and go check the scriptures. Check it back. Please check it back. Be like, be like Liberian Jews and search scripture daily to see if what I say is so. If it's not so, I'm wrong. The pastors are not always right, but the scriptures are always right. Ministers are not always right, but the scriptures are always right. Check it. Please don't be lazy and just hear it and uh, go into business. Check it back. I sent him out that God, God wants us to, to learn these things. There's a time coming on the church when we're going we're gonna to start to see some things happening. And because we're not prepared, it's going to blow us out of the water. There are times what you believe is based on your personal views you may have been by, affected by your biases. Matter or not, what I mean, it says, is, is our opinion our views are only correct. It's a fact that they agree with the scriptures. Scriptures are always correct. A minister may be incorrect. An example is, is of this is the visit of the wise men after Jesus' birth. Just kind of believe that there are three wise men. Scripture do not tell us how many of them came. Then said tells us that they brought three gifts, gold, frankincense, and more. It's also believed that the shepherds and the wise men were together present at the manger where Jesus was born. Also isn't incorrect. The shepherds, sorry. I seem to have jumped all on. Yeah. The shepherds visited Jesus while he, while he was in the manger. Wise men saw him at the house, his home. We are examining topics that you may be unfamiliar with. We will need to take note and search the scripture yourself as well. Some of these topics you are unfamiliar with. I wasn't familiar with it until God started to show it to me. And I've been in the Lord over 40 years. Most churches don't teach on these things. And we, we need to start to dig. We need to start to dig and find what God is saying. Things that will, will be shared will affect you eternally. Not your salvation, but your attitude and, and, and actions. This will result in your storing or not storing of things for eternity. A lot of us as Christians tend to have tunnel vision. We tend to believe that our, our lifetime and our current experience are the only thing that God is focused on. God has been working for more than 10 million years before creation. In turn to pass, it has been working in individual lives since creation, thousands of years, and it continues to work for more than 10 billion years. Come, it turn to future. Stop thinking that your 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 life is all that God is doing. Or somebody or somebody said one time, God God, God love me more than anybody else. Not. They're so they're so confused. No, it, no, it does not. God's all the world. I believe that my church is the best church. No, it, no, it's not. God is working in this church. My nation is no God. God is working in nations. We also tend to think that our country, our church, our family, our personal life is what God is primarily focused on. The Bible tells us, for God so loved the world. Not just my corner of it. God so loved the world. In this study, we'll primarily but not exclusively use the book of Revelations. Some of the themes are also found in Matthew 24 and 25, Mark 13, Luke 21, and other passages. 
but our primary story is is is, is the book of Revelation. In the past, God worked through men to bring redemption to his creation, but it was woefully inefficient and frustrating. He says in Isaiah 6, 3, 5, I looked, but there was no one to help, and I wondered that there was no one to uphold. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation for me, and my own fury, it sustained me. Because of it, it being so inefficient, he took that one himself to ensure salvation and gave the mankind. He did it himself. He just came into the world, he orchestrated, orchestrated a new era. Well, one of the prophecies that he fulfilled is upon Genesis 3 15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your heel, and you shall bruise his heel. You shall bruise your head, and, he sh and you shall bruise his heel. The serpent will only bruise the seed of the woman's heel. They are only, they, they are only affecting his walk. The prophecy concerning seed of the woman is that he, will, he, the seed, will bruise the serpent's head. Totally incapacitating him. The scripture tells us. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. That's 1 Corinthians 15 25. Revelation, Revelation 1 1 tells us the rule. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things that must shortly take place. And he sent and, and signified it by his angels to his servants, John. This is what the book of Revelation is about. Shown or revealing Jesus' long-term plans and intent when he was born into earth. It isn't about the Antichrist or the false prophet or the beast or the, the Babylon mystery religion. It's about Jesus revealing his plan and bringing it to pass. We also see the, 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 the devil's futile attempts at reacting to it. God controls, God controls the narrative. Satan is not in charge, God is. I want us to get that. Satan is not in charge, no matter what people say. God is. Revelation 1 to 3, introduces, and this, sorry, Revelation chapter 1 to chapter 3, introduces and describes and brings greetings from the three persons who make up the Godhead. It addresses, it was addressed to the seven churches in Asia, why not? The message was carried by an angel to John, who was called the disciple who Jesus loved. The message was sent to seven churches in Asia. But as, as we explained before, there's many more applications. So those was sent to seven churches. The seven churches, actually the application, many churches, not just those seven churches. There are persons that fit the bill that, that, that God speaks to as well. In chapter 2, he addresses the angels of the seven churches. I, I, I've gotten into trouble, into trouble for this, saying that, that I, I was one of the angels to RC, because it's a misunderstanding of, of what I meant. The Greek word used for angel is agilos or angelos, which means angel or messenger. This word agilos has been used in passages that refer, refers to human beings. Mark 1, 2. As it is written um, in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before you, your face, who will prepare your way before you. Right. The, the word used was agilos, as messenger. My messenger, my agilos. It's coming it translated to angel. This part was, was referring to John the Baptist. Libyan 2.15. Yet I considered it necessary to send to you Epaphrodorus, my brother, fellow worker, and fellow soldier, but your messenger and the one who ministered to my needs. Right, it says your messenger or your angelos, angelos. So it's going to be translated to your angel. The passage describes Epaphroditus as a messenger from the Philippian church. We, we call Apollos, angelos, angelos is used. I believe that, that when the angels from, from the same church are being addressed, they are human beings. They are held accountable for the church to be doing, doing things that God did not approve of. And they were rebuked. The strong concordant definition of this person also implies a pastor. 
I believe that God has messengers or angels who are humans over different churches and ministries. That may be a person or a group of persons, but God will hold them accountable. I hope that that has been clear. So, so, so you might find, for example, or oh, abundant life, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a person that God has put in charge. He's the angel or the messenger of the church. God will speak to him about, about issues that are happening. And hold him accountable. Or maybe a group of, of, of pastors. In chapter 4, verse 1, we read. After these things I looked, and before a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. All the events in the next passages, from, from, from chapter 4, verse 1, everything after that will be revealed to John. It's going to happen after the end of chapter 3. John is invited to the throne room of God. In heaven, he sees God. And it's shown the sevenfold spirits of God, spirit of God, four beasts, and 24 elders, shown the 24 elders on them. Right? It's, it's called the seven spirits of God, the sevenfold spirit of God. We, we, I could show you from Isaiah where he talks about the spirit of large, spirit of um, um, wisdom and counsel, understanding, fair Lord. Mm -hmm. It's the sevenfold. In chapter 5, we see God on his throne with a book or a scroll which had things written inside and on the back. It was sealed with seven seals. It says, a strong angel asked a question. Who is qualified to own the book and to loosen the seals that, that kept it closed? Look at its contents. One of the 24 elders answered, The land of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. It says, immediately Alam, who had been previously killed, took the book out of God's right hand. After he, the Lamb took the book, the book or the scroll, four beasts and 24 elders explained why he's qualified to do so. Verse 9 to 10 says, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood, out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and he shall reign on the earth. All right. You see, what was contained in the book was God's plan to restore mankind back to an uh, internal relationship with him. That was God's plan in the book. In the scroll, it was con and could not be released until somebody was qualified, owned it. Jesus was earned that right, right our crowd, to, our qualification, pushing that plan by living a sinless life. Then for mankind and causing those who accepted him to become kings and priests to God. They would reign on the earth forever. I will come back to this point about them reigning on the earth. I'll come back to that at a later date. It's important that we talk about that, but not, not today. Not for, not for our study. Only of the seven seas lead to the sounding of the seven trumpets, which finally leads to the seven bowls of plagues. God control what happened, not Satan. Please, people are afraid of revelation because they don't understand what is contained in it. God control what happens. He controls what happens. He controls what happens. Not Satan. I believe that this said that at the seventh seal being opened, seven trumpets begin to sound. While the seven trumpets is being sounded, the seven bowls of plagues are poured out. Jesus, not Satan. Not Satan, owned the seven seals. He's the one that started the process. He owned the seal, he owned, owned the book. I begin to own the seals so this thing can, can happen. Look at what Revelation 6, 6 to 8. Look at what happens. The first seal. Sorry. There appears a white horse who's rider on a bow, and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest or to win many battles and gain the victory. A white horse rides out. And his, his, his job is he comes as a conqueror bent on conquest or to win many battles. I mean, wars are going to be fought. Revelation 6, 1 to 2. Second seal, a fire red horse appears whose rider was given a sword and was authorized to remove peace on earth. 
that 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 rider is that what's remove peace on the earth. Um, I I I I don't want to just care, but but guess what? Tons of wars have been fought since Christ came on earth. No, no, many involving millions of people. I'm not a war since AD one thousand. To know, I think almost hundreds and hundreds of wars, killing almost a million people. That they have tracked on. Authorize him peace on earth. And who authorized him? God did. Not Satan. He's bringing some things to pass. He's shaking up some stuff. The third seal, a black horse comes on the scene and is red as a pair of balances or scales. It seems to affect food supply, comes scarce and expensive. Revelation 6, 5 to 6. Fourth seal, a pale horse whose rider was named Death appears. Hades, the realm of the dead, follows him. What was given to them over a quarter of the earth? People would die by weapons of war, hunger, and wild beasts. 6 78. When the fifth seal is home, John sees the souls of martyred believers under the altar. They ask for the avenging of their blood, of the martyrs. And those who were responsible. Obviously, they are, they are not being resurrected as yet. They're given a white robe and told the rest of the while longer until the number of their fellow servants and virgin who would be killed as a were was completed. Listen to this. It suggests that there are Christians who are, are said to be killed for the gospel's sake. And then in your mind, we're into warfare. Not a joke, not like a Sunday school class. We're into warfare. Satan is serious. And God is also serious. There are times we don't, like people don't understand the seriousness of, of, of what time we know. There are Christians who, who, who will die for the gospel. You can pray for the, the kingdom come. That's not going not gonna to say it's just stop it. Why? Because of this mindset that this life is all that, that exists. No, they're, they're laying up for, laying up for the world to come. This battle of, of unseating Satan and defeating him is a serious one. Not just making people get better, feel better for themselves, but undoing Satan's work. That's serious stuff. And there are Christians, if Bridget are hurt by it, it's a fact. I'm sorry for saying to you, but the Bible tells us there are people who are going to die and God is gonna God, God is saying he's gonna he's gonna elect for them to die. It says that that was given to them that the number of their fellow servants and virgin who will who will be killed as a world was completed. There's a number God has that their people are gonna die. But look at what happened next. After this request by the martyrs, things begin to change dramatically. Because a martyr people dying. <coughs> Things begin to change dramatically. Note the changes when the other seas are open. Our martyrdom causes God's intervention to increase and change dramatically. God Christians have died. God begin to increase some stuff. In fact, the scripture that says, um, except, except Lord that shone the days, no flesh will be saved. So God seems to shone the day when they start to. Kill Christians, bringing some things to pass. There are many of us who have confidence in this life, in what I'm in this life, or, or focuses this life. We don't understand that we're going to spend more than 10 million years with God after this. And God is preparing us for that. That time. We have to warfare, we have to fight. There are people that are, I think, a brother, brother Ben again, brother Ben, who has left his comfortable home. To go to Zambia to share the gospel. He has to do that many amenities. And there are many Christians who don't even want to pray. Oh, the most they pray about is they look at troubles that's coming their way. If their neighbor die and go to hell, it means nothing to them. Um, somebody was sharing recently what a crusade that they went to. And they had to minister from, to somebody from about 9 to, 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 to 11 or 10 30. And there are quick people who say, well, we can't, but that's much work. 
We don't want, we don't want to see people delivered. We want to be set free. Because we don't understand that it's not about this time, it's about building of God's kingdom. Which is bigger than us, bigger than our time. Let's look at some of those changes. The sixth seal. Look at all different it is. The first, the first four was about things I'm in the earth. Got the sixth seal. Not only on, on the earth things start. Not only on the earth things start to react or respond, but even think in the universe. A major earthquake takes place. Sun gets the sun gets black. The moon changes color to blood red. The star begins to fall from the sky, noticeably. And the sky begins to roll up like a scroll. Can you imagine looking up to, into the sky? The sky begins to fall up. The, the, the show the, that I watched called the time machine. And you saw where the, the moon was destroyed. The, the, the sun that will look at, the, 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 the heaven that will look at begins to scroll and curl up. God begin to do something. What happens then? It's so dramatic that people begin to recognize that God is causing these things to happen. They hide that ass to be hidden from his wrath. By saying the great death of his wrath has come, they said to the mountain, follow us and cover us. God begin to shake up. There's this mindset about Jesus being gentle. Gentle Jesus being come in a little um, a little cradle. One scripture revelation talk about him. I said his face is so terrible that even the heavens run from it. They panic the heavens run from his face. They be, the people began to say, My gosh, spare us, save us for the greater of God's wrath has come. That's Revelation 6, 12 to 17. A number of events. Happen between the sixth seal and the seventh seal being open. One, the first one. Well, four angels are assigned to earth, earth, the earth, the sea, and the trees. They, they told that they should not start until the servants of God were sealed on their foreheads. Hold well, a second. Angels are given the responsibility to destroy the earth. And they are told, listen, don't do it yet until I, the servants of God have been sealed. So we can't afford for them to, them to be affected. As Christians, we are protected. There's a fear of revelation. There's a fear of what's going to happen. So because of that, we, 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 we panic when we don't want to read the revelation. There's so much truth locked up in there. They'll be protected. They, they'll be, not be harmed by the judgment on the earth. They'll be like, oh God protected Israelites when they lived in Egypt. They were down in Egypt. Like with Israelites were. When the, the plagues came, they affect Egyptians, they didn't affect Israelites. Reading Revelation 7, 4 to 8, the number of persons called 144,000 of the Israelites were going to be saved. No, I need to clear this up. I believe that it, it's, that it, that I do not believe that it's a literal number. One for, I don't believe it, and I'll tell you why. But it represents God's government. Number of 12 represents God's government. Example, 12 tribes of Israel. 12 apostles. That's, that means government. It represents God's government. Now, do I believe that, that they're natural Jews? People believe that it's natural Jews. Let them tell you something. A Jew is not saved unless he receives Jesus Christ. That's it. Not because he's a Jew, because he received Jesus. Romans 9, 68 says, For they are not all Israel who are of Israel, nor are they all children because they are the seed of Abraham. But the Isaac your seed shall be called. Okay, because they are natural Jews doesn't mean that, that, they, that God sees them as Israel. It continues, that, that is, those who are children of the flesh are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as a seed. Not, not, it's not the physical Jews, it's what's called the spiritual Jews. Paul was both, both a physical Jew and a spiritual Jew. 
He tells about that physical Jew and that spiritual Jew. The scripture says in, in, in John 1 12, John 11, 1 11 says, He came unto his own, but his own receiving not. But to as many as received them, give it right to be called Son of God. If they did not receive Jesus Christ, they're not qualified. That's why we, we need to evangelize uh, the, the, the Jews. Yeah. There's a scripture, I was at a conference last, yesterday. And at the conference, they're, they're talking about to somebody who was as a minister to Jews. There's a big mission for you to, to win them to Christ. The Jews have been told that Jesus Christ is not the Messiah. According to the Gospels, the high priest lie and said Jesus was not resurrected, but they sold his body. And they, they are mission for you to reach. They need to receive Jesus Christ to get, to get what is what's promised to them. And that's part of our job. Um, it continues. Also, it says 144 souls of all tribes of Israel were sealed. Verse 5. Even though it says all of the tribes of, of children of Israel, not all of Jacob's children or natural children were, were mentioned. Judah, Reuben, God, Asher, Naphtali, Manasseh, Joseph, Joseph's other son, Jacob adopted, Simeon, Levi, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, and Benjamin are mentioned. Jacob, Jacob also adopted Ephraim from Joseph. In fact, Ephraim was, 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 was Joseph's principal son. Not mentioned. Dan is not mentioned. Samson was also Dan. It, it says all, all the tribes are, are, are children of Israel. So you cannot be speaking about all the physical all because all not mentioned. We see this number again in Revelation 14. Again, we'll discuss that them later. That one for 4,000 in Revelation 14. Here in chapter 7, 9th century, read about a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues and before the throne of God, and before the Lamb, told it with white robes, branches in their hand. Then is told that they came from out of the great tribulation. The seventh seal. When this seal is open, there is silence in heaven. I'm going to stop at the seventh seal, but it's open. And seven angels are given seven trumpets to sound. For they begin to sound the trumpets, something significant happens. Look at, look at this. It has given much incense, which, which he mixes with all the prayers. You know that all the prayers of the saints offers a mixture before God. After offering this, he then fills his censer with fire from the altar before God and throws it into the earth. Immediately there are noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. And angels prepare themselves to begin to blow the trumpet. Because of the saints praying, they are directly responsible for what happens next. They, they, they are the result of our prayers. I'm going to stop there, but understand this one. We have a part to play in what happens in the earth. God is working with us. They began to pray. The scripture, the scripture says the angel mix our prayers with the incense and, put, and take, offer it to God. And then from the altar, it takes a, a, um, fire and throw it in the earth, a result of our praying. And then there's noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. And the seven trumpets begin to sound. I'll we'll talk about them more in details next week. I was hoping we'd have time to cover some of the trumpets. Uh, let, let, me, let me just read. Uh, let, let, me, let me just read um, first four. The first trumpet, hail, fire mixed with blood, was thrown into the earth, which Burned up a third of trees and green grass. No, zero result of your praying and my praying. You must understand there are things that God wants to bring to pass. Satan is getting away too much things and it's time to bring an end to his reign. As a result of our, our, our prayers, the trumpets begin to sound. The first trumpet, hail, fire, mixed with blood, was thrown into earth. It burned up a third of trees and green grass. That's Revelation 8, verse 7. 
Second trumpet, again, a result of our prayer. Something like a great mountain when it was thrown into the sea. As a result, a third of the sea turned blood, turned to blood. A third of creatures living in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. A result of our praying. We need to understand God's purpose. There are some things that we need to, to, to start to ensure it stops it and has to stop. And all praying for all just all needs is not mm -hmm. enough. We need to start to pray for God's purpose. Somebody come to us who is sick. We don't just pray for them to get healed so they can go back home and feel good. No, you pray for them to, get, to, to be healed so they can turn around and preach the gospel. I share the testimony with others around them. And with their families and their neighbors and their friends, their co-workers. They just get caught up and need what God's purpose the third trumpet blows. A huge, a huge burning star called Wormwood. It fell, falls on, the, on a third of the rivers and things of water. That's fresh water. Water become that, that bitter and many humans die. Result of our praying. Four trumpet sounds. A third of the sun, a third of the moon, and as Third of the cyber key was struck out of the skies, resulting in darkness for a third of the day and for a third of the night. An angel then is heard crying in the midst of heaven and saying, Lord, woe, woe, woe. And then the inhabitants of the earth, the, of the remaining three blasts of the trumpet, of the three angels which are about to sound. The last three angels, it's significant what they're going to do. Next three trumpets are going to have adverse effect the person who live on earth. As a result of our praying, we need to get serious about God. I'm sick to this year. I don't expect to live to 100. Truth be told, I don't want to. I want to, 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 to fulfill God's will for my life and go home to build it and go to the next level at the asphalt. But I want to make sure that in my lifetime, but I can't say I've I've run the race, I've kept the faith, I've done what God called me to do. I want us to all say that. Oh your mics. I want to say this. When Jesus comes back. When Jesus comes back. When Jesus comes back, back. I should be able to say. I should be able to say. I should be able to say. I've run the race. I've run the, I've run the, run the race. race. I've kept the faith. I've kept, I've kept, kept the faith. I've done what God wanted me to do. I've done, I've done what God. God wanted me to do. Amen. 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 We're Amen. Talking about, not talking about just needs, but purpose. We, we need to feed Satan. We need to defeat him. We think that we, we live in this fairy tale world that Satan doesn't exist. Sorry. That figure in top of imagination. No, he's real. He's real. He causes so much difficulties on people because of sin. We need to take him to task. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop here. Next week, when I come back, I'm going to cover the tree, other tree trumpets. I'm going to cover um, the, the seven balls of plagues. Talk a little bit about the, the, the Antichrist and the Mark of the Beast and the, 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 the Babylon the Great. So please stay tuned. I'm going to post the, the recording on the chat later today. Amen. Mm -hmm. Any questions, any comments? We are staying tuned. Yeah, you yeah. stay tuned for next week. We'll talk this week. <laughs> any any questions? Please, it's important that you that, that we, we, we yeah, yeah. ask questions. Please don't just sit on and listen. Ask questions. Begin to challenge things. I'm not right. The scriptures are right. And if listen, I can't be wrong. These are what I've researched and what I've seen. And I'm home to correction. 
But okay. Uh -huh. Custody. Yes, my you always talk about um coming back for church without spot or wrinkle and that end time revival. When what time frame you think this is gonna happen going into the great tribulation? Uh I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna uh address that that great tribulation soon. It's there are two uh periods of tribulation. There's one that comes after Jesus went back to Jesus to the Father. And that uh and then there's there's the seven years when Satan is cast into the earth. But there's a tribulation I started a long time. If you read the, the book called Fox's Book of Martyr, and they talk about what some something that Christians went through. There's one example, for example, they said that they, in, in Rome, they get, get Christians because they, they were being blamed for a fire that destroyed part of Rome. And they, they, they persecuted Christians for it. And what they did was this emperor would soak a jacket in, in, in fat, in oil, in Greece, mm. put it on, on, on Christians, put it on them, the jacket, and light it to light his, 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 his garden. There's one time when they said that they crucified so much people that there's no trees for like miles around. We we're told that Christians have been thrown to lions and wolves and starving animals. They, they said that as I, as I was in, in a tree, I was cut in two. With him, with him. The scripture talk about it. They are son or son. Timothy, they said that I'm, I'm told they tied, they tied one as unto one on horse, the other unto on our horse, beat both horses together and they ripped them apart. Peter was um Peter was, was, was crucified upside down, Paul was bearded. And the Christian was stoned to death. So that tribulation thing is actually. We, we live in the West, live a, a, in a fool's paradise, I call it. We think that we're safe. We're not safe. Satan affects the world. And at some point, it affects us. We're in a battle, a fight for the souls of men, the lives of people. We need to take it seriously and start to pray for them. Satan, Satan, not playing games. But we, we, we're not afraid of him. We're fighting him. For the kingdom of God to be established. No, per me personally, I expect Jesus to come up within 200 years. That's me personally. And I could be very wrong. I, I don't I have no problem being wrong. But there are some things that the scripture says must take place before, before that happens. There are some things that the scripture says must take place. One, it talks about the, the, the role of the apostles, prophets, and teachers and pastors. So that you all come to the unity of the faith. There has to be a uniting of the churches. One. Two. The scripture, the, the, this gospel of the kingdom shall I preach in all ends of the world, all nations of the world, then shall end come. When they was talking about, they weren't talking about, because in the gospel, it says, this gospel of the kingdom, the one with power, one that can't convince men. Not just mercy, but power. I mean, the Christians don't want to pray for power. They want to pray for God bless us so. Rather than God show up mightily of God. Who like your Lord? I heard a story once about the minister was um someone was sent to assassinate him. Oh, and, and when when they came to assassinate him, um God convicted them and the, the, the assassin came and confessed and became a Christian. We need to start in men being changed. Some people that may want, may want to kill us. Yeah, those are two things. The scripture says, um, for the must, must must retain him and keep him until the fulfillment of, of the thing that, that were prophesied. And there are a couple of other things that are there that must take place first. You just not go to spare us from persecution. Don't, that's not scripture. So the, the fear of persecution is not, not, not the reason why it's going to come back. Satan is, is, not, is not playing. So some of these um, might need to be muted. 
fair persecution is not a reason why Jesus is coming back. Because if you if read Foxy Books of Martin, which documents persecution of the church, millions of Christians have died. He wants to bring an end to Satan's reign. Amen. And any more questions? Any more comments? Sorry, did I answer a question, Minister Glenn? Yes, I know in the sense that this great revival, mm -hmm. end time revival, that we want to see, that we're believing the multiplied thousands to be saved are possibly not happening on our side of the world, so to speak. Well, 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 well guess what, guess what, what has happened? We have believed the prophets who have prophesied and not the scriptures. According to scriptures, revival hasn't stopped. When Paul went into two places to minister, he was persecuted, but told that people got saved. What, what has happened? We're, we're waiting for God to move. God to wait for us to move. In time, revival is going to come because Christians have said, I'm going to take the gospel, going to obey God and go. God is not going to bless us with revival. We're going to start to pursue, going to push against the power of darkness, and we're going to see God show up. It says in Mark 16, he says, The sense of falling that belief. Yeah, these signs shall follow them that believe. And there are many believers who are not allowing the signs to follow them. Uh, there's a, a brother called Daniel Colanda. He should not tell somebody. A Muslim came to, came to his meeting. What was he looking for somewhere to stay? Because he missed his boss. While in the meeting, guess what? He got healed of deafness. A Muslim. I read of this minister praying and said, he challenged Muslims on the this, on this stage. I said, I'm going to pray in the name, in the name of Muhammad and Allah. I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus. And he prayed in the name, said, in the name of Muhammad, be healed. And about 12, 12 people were there. He said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And they, every, all 12 got healed. Can you imagine what it said to the Muslims? They saw God first and So what 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 I, what I pray for not just revival but God's people going, sharing the gospel, sharing it. Again, I, that's all about this minister, and, and I respect him greatly. He 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 is in in a, in a the depressed era of Jamaica, and he's carrying the gospel to people. He's carrying it out there. He's carrying it out there. Carrying the gospel. <laughs> We're saying, God, show up. God is saying, no, you show up and I'll show up. Whatever you burn out, I'll burn out. Whatever you burn out, whatever you lose out, I'll lose them. You have to go. Amen. So, so that, that's what I believe about, about end time revival. Christians, Christians are going to get serious. Let me, let me share a, a, an example with you. God told the disciples they must go from Jerusalem to Judea, Samaria, outermost part of the world. But guess what? When the anointing came, the old ghost came down, they were so excited. They stayed in Jerusalem and worshiped and enjoyed things. And guess what God did? God called Persian to come. When the Persian came, they began, they began to go back to their cities and carry the gospel with them. And many, not many um, Gentiles got saved, Greeks got saved. Sometimes, sometimes God allows persecution in order to, 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 to sharpen us, to get us focused. And let me tell you what I personally believe that persecution is coming for the church. We can start to prioritize and to focus. No longer uh, is my is my church, it's our church. No longer am I gonna fight against my brother, brother down the road. I'm gonna stand with my brother down the road. Christ is building his church, fight against the poor of darkness. To establish his kingdom in the earth. 
Amen. I, I don't need that answer about end time revival. David, you mentioned that you think um God will return or Jesus will return in another 200 years. That's my view. I could be wrong. All right. Right. I mean, we all know that nobody knows when the, the father is uh, I mean, the son is gonna return. But why 200 years? I I I I would I wouldn't think even that far, you know. Well, well guess based what? Based on what I see coming to pass around me right now. Well, well what what has come coming to pass around me is not new. Ban in the ban in the Bible is not new. The ban used to ban the Bible all the time from before, before now. Years. People dying. They, they, what they call the Spanish flu after World War One killed millions of people. They say more people died from it than the war itself. So COVID, COVID is a joke compared to that. Um, people fighting and murdering you for the gospel. Not new. So the reason why people are looking to Christ might come back because they want to be saved out of the, the, the crisis. God wants to start to fight Satan. Want to start to fight it on. Want the church to. Do you recall a passage I shared about um the angel taking the prayers of the saints and mixing it with incense on the altar and then pouring out it into the earth? Because a Christian being focused in their prayers, they're going to start to bring the kingdom of God to pass. But it's a seek first kingdom of God. Many, many people that are not focused on that. They want to be blessed and highly favored. They want to be enjoy the Lord. Even in Dan Hotel, no, no big deal. I, I'm, 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 I'm going to speak of this. Um, I, I, I won't tell you who said it, but I, I'm told about a brother going into, into the, the press committee and ministering. That man, that man get the message you now. Must carry the gospel to those who need it. And many Christians are so caught up with their own lives. They don't know, have no time for the gospel. No, not all of us are, are going to go. But, but guess what? All of us can, can send. We can pray. We can be involved and in finally get, get in the stats and praying. I believe that. I, I, I said 200 years could be shorter, could be longer, but guess what? I think that God says I can't the scriptures must come to pass. Like the, the, the unity of the faith of, of the virgin. I believe that trials will come. The scripture says that many shall follow you from the faith. Many shall follow you before he comes back. That this, this is gonna be a fine tuning of the, of the church. I'm gonna show you something else, which which I, I am to believe. There are some people that are gonna die because they they, they, they don't. They, they, they have lost the understanding of what God wants. Um, when we, how do I come to that? When they're about to come into the promised land, 40 years are spent and generation died in the wilderness. God not use a new generation to come into the promised land. Sometimes what you think, what you believe, what they're used to is not what God wants to use. There are Christians who have a problem with other Christians. Um, I've seen Christians who tattooed up, wear pierced all over the body, but them love Jesus. There are Christians who are gonna criticize them, but guess what? They are the ones that can reach those other tattooed, pierced up men who are going out there. They are, I, 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 I saw something once with there's a man who but a sex change. And after getting sex change, he, he, he become a quote-unquote woman. He got saved. He could not, he could not reverse the, the process. That's what he did, decided to do. And I remain celibate. If God, if God would touch his body and call him to become a man again, fine. until then, he's going to push for the gospel. Push him. Prod and fight and war for the gospel. I've heard of women in Iran who have said getting saved is a death sentence. 
I've said to people when, when, when I get my, my plans publicly, I, I've signed my death warrant. And I could be raped serving Jesus. And they said, listen, they're going to rape me. They're going to rape me because I'm not going to stop, stop following him. That mindset need to come to the church in the, in the West. That says, I'm going to fight until Jesus is showing up in Parliament, in Congress. I'm going to fight the people that are on their knees for Jesus. Amen. So my, my guess, my... Uh, my hope, my desire is that he come out within 200 years. But I could be also be wrong. Within, not but it says within. I could be wrong. That's my estimation. You could you could come back in 40 years. Get something sorted out. If there's mass persecution and church had to come together, that, that could happen. Um, it's now ten five minutes to seven. I've gone over the time. Anybody have any more questions or comments for a close? Did that answer your question, Sister Janice? Yes, Sister Janice. 